Hey everyone, this is my second piece called Journalism in the Project um, Fragments of Self. I never meant to get into journalism and in almost every way I wasn't suited for journalism because maybe because I'm being honest here, I'm a fantasist and I shouldn't be a straight factual writer. I stumbled into journalism because of my preoccupations. I had lived in Japan and I was about 24 years old. I had written a book, I called it In Gondwana Land, but its title was later changed to Beyond the Devil's Teeth and it was a collection of my of my writing, of my journeys in Africa, India and Latin America. The book hadn't been published and I was depressed about that. But I was obsessed about a few things and a few people. One of them in particular was the legendary English explorer, Sir Wilfred Thesiger. He lived in a shack on a mountainside in the north of Kenya at a town, a tiny town called Marilal. And I had gone to university in Kenya and I knew Marilal. So I went up there. I went up in a car, in a taxi that I hailed downtown Nairobi. And it was a London black taxi. I didn't know what I'd do when I got there, what I'd say or whether I would be received at all, but I was received. And that was how I first met Thesiger. I wrote something about him and it was published in a travel magazine. And I can't describe how excited and happy I was to have my name in print. It meant everything to me. And I went on and on about it. And I started writing other pieces for all kinds of magazines, lousy travel magazines, the Beehive Gazette, all kinds of things, in-flight magazines. I didn't realize it at the time, but I was learning two skills. One was to be rejected, and I, oh yes, I was rejected. Again and again and again, I can remember the editors. No, we're not interested, sorry we're passing. Are you crazy? We don't want a piece on such and such a, such and such a person or place. And the other thing I learned was to churn out work and to do it fast. And journalism taught me to never give up and also to churn out work, like I say, and to rehone a piece because always it seemed an editor and these were sort of the dying days of Fleet Street in the mid-90s. An editor would want uh, a piece completely changed within an hour before the presses rolled. I used to write maybe up to a dozen pieces a day at one point. Tiny little, you know, 600 word features and I would try and place them and sometimes I would get them sold. But then slowly I saw there was this extraordinary middle ground where I could blend fact and fantasy in my own delirious way. And I wrote a lot of pieces for men's and women's magazines. The kind of thing that in the 90s was really fashionable what was known at the time as sort of reportage, serious pieces. I did tremendous amounts of work. I wrote pieces about women in the Ku Klux Klan and men in the Ku Klux Klan and women on death row. And gosh, I did pieces on women clearing landmines in the killing fields of Cambodia and all kinds of articles particularly from the Deep South in the United States and from India. India, of course, provided more 
material, more fodder for my wacky, high octane brand of journalism than anywhere else I think I've ever been. And the more pieces I wrote, the more I learned and the more I found that I could sit down and churn out work without giving it very much thought at all. I didn't realise it at the time, but my journalism was like a self-invented course and it taught me it taught me everything that I've ever needed in my writing life, in my writing career. In particular, it taught me to, to keep going, even when the chips are down. I, I know this isn't journalism, but I couldn't get published. I couldn't get my first book published. Um, and so I started a, an agency, which I used to syndicate my journalism. It was called Worldwide Media Limited, and I was William Watkins, the editor-in-chief. And what Worldwide Media did, it did two things. It syndicated my work, as I said, and I took the photographs most of the time, and I lit the stamps and put them on the envelopes, and I was the cycle courier taking things across town. And I had full control on my work, and I loved that. But Worldwide Media also acted as my agent when I sold my first travel book. And I know I've described that elsewhere, but it was only possible because I had started this agency uh, to syndicate my work. So, and so what I wanted to say is, in terms of journalism, Everyone seems to have something to say about journalists and journalism, and most of it is absolute rot. Journalism isn't this highbrow, fantastical thing. It is not literature. It's something that gets written one day and is in the garbage the next day. But it is this extraordinary learning ground. It's a place where anyone, whoever they are, can find a voice for themselves as a writer.